Hello once again folks, welcome to another video to our Maras Ganach. Today we got something special. I'm gonna have my first guest in the hot seat for the fly fishing tapes. And it's coming right after this. Right, here we are folks, introduce you to David Anshul. Good morning George. Long time friend, sometimes fishing buddy, mm. and I would go so far as to say a uh, fly fishing fanatic. Would that be true to say David? Yeah, it fills up a lot of my life and um, I'm pleased that it does. It's a bit of an obsession, but a pleasant one. And how did it all start for you? How did you get into fly fishing? Well, I grew up in Kent in the UK. Uh -huh. um, my daddy took me fishing as a little boy with a bobber and maggots and all yeah, this yeah. kind of carry on. For some reason, the thoughts of fly fishing where you have a much more natural method of fishing without all that paraphernalia mm -hmm. appealed to me. I always liked the travelling fishing without all that gear that coarse fishermen have. Um, so it appealed to me, so I experimented um, by fishing for chub in the part of the world where I was in Kent. Mm -hmm. um, but the thoughts of trout and fly fishing in other areas always appealed to me. And in fact, it was one of the reasons that I moved to Ireland in 1977. Really? Yes, not the only reason. Life is better here, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest. True. But um, yeah, f fishing was one of the reasons. Yeah. And when you came to Ireland, did you immediately start fly fishing? Yeah, um, the neighbour I met very quickly in the 70s, um, Matty Gilly Ryan, you know. Yeah, uh, I do, yeah. Um, he wasn't a, a purist, but he was like lots of Irish people at the time. He'd go down in the river in the summertime in the evenings to catch a few trout for yeah. the pot, mm, yeah. <laughs> as it were. So he kindly drove me through the fields, which took me aback that yeah. we were allowed to just open gates and drive down to yeah. the riverbank. And we fished the River Shore then for oh, 10 years together, I'd say, you know, two or three times a week. Um, where I thought I'd tuned my fly fishing up, but yeah. um, I was fooling myself, really. <laughs> we all tend to do that. Yeah, because after that, for a number of years, because my family or my business or whatever picked up, yeah. my fishing time became very, very small. And I didn't fish, and by the time I got back to the river, yeah. the river had changed, and the old-fashioned techniques weren't working, anymore. Weren't working mm. anymore, so I had to mm. relearn fly fishing. Yeah. So that would have been you know, 15 or 20 years ago, I yeah. guess. And so, like... What 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 is the real attraction of it? What what is it that makes you keep coming back to it's, it? It's not easy, yeah. which is is an attraction. I know that sounds mm. crazy, but I'm much more interested in the difficulty and overcoming the difficulties of fishing than I am in catching hundreds of fish. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be using feathers out at sea and catching yeah, yeah, mackerel, mackerel and yeah. pollock and stuff. Yeah. So <coughs> it's difficult. It's uh, all fly fishing species live for some reason in beautiful places. So if mm. you think of trout and salmon, but if you think of the exotic species, they live mm. in clear, shallow, warm water. Very, very pleasant environment yeah. to spend time in. Yeah. So that's nice. I love the fact that there's nothing between you and the fly or you and the fish. No mm. weights, no floats, no bobbles. Yeah. It's a very natural feel mm. to fishing. So yeah. I think they're probably the main reasons that I, that mm. I like it. Difficulty, um, the technique and the, and the naturalness of it and the fact that you go to nice places. The thing I noticed with you fishing, and it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's very unusual really, because most people want to catch as many fish as they possibly can. Mm. And I think we all have that sort of buck fever at some point in our fly fishing mm. career, if you like, where we just want to catch mm. as many fish as mm. possible. And like that would be a strong desire now, obviously, for people in the competition mm. aspect of mm. things. But what I noticed about you was, and I, I, I kind of had a wry smile a couple of times, was mm. I'd be fishing, say, with one of my favourite methods, which is the upstream nymph, and I can catch a lot of trout from time to time on that. Mm. And there was a couple of occasions where I was catching 
mm-hmm. and you were maybe 20 yards away and you were mm-hmm. fishing a little dry fly and you were catching one or two mm-hmm. and I'd say Dave come over here and, like put on a nymph you're going to no 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 I'm alright I'll stay over here with me little dry fly because because for me it's the enjoyment of the fishing which is partly catching fish of yeah. course but it's actually enjoying the way that you are fishing so yeah. for me seeing a, a, a fish come up and take a dry fly from the surface or a popper or seeing a fish hit the fly yeah. it's, it's so much more exciting than fishing blind if you like so dry fly is definitely Definitely your preferred Definitely, method. Definitely, yeah, yeah. You yeah. tried nymphing a couple of times, and I could see by you that like you weren't particularly enthused by it. Well, it catches fish, yeah, but and there is skill to it, and I like the fact that there's skill to it. Mm. Um, but no, it just doesn't ring my doesn't, bell doesn't quite like the seeing a fish. I remember fishing in. Um, it sounds like a, a, a name dropping type thing, but fishing in. Um, the Amazon for peacock bass, and I was with some American friends who love catching fish, and they, every time they mentioned the trip, they said, and do you know we caught 782 <laughs> peacock bass? When I was there, I only fished with poppers on the surface, and I caught maybe, you know, yeah. a tenth the number they mm. did, but the joy I got by fishing on the surface as yeah. against a, a streamer under the water was yeah. enormous, you know. So yes, the technique is... The dry fly is your favourite. So Absolutely. Let's just say, for instance, uh, paint a scenario for you, you're down on the, on the river, you're, you're walking it up along the bank and next thing you see a trout or maybe a couple mm. of trout start rising mm. and uh, what um, makes you decide you look into your fly but what makes you decide on what fly you're going to use what 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 attracts you to a particular fly well I have a little section in my fly box which is labeled George McGrath's flies and if I, <laughs> if I can pick one of those I'll choose one of those Appreciate that, yeah. um, but seriously um, unless you're talking about an intense period of fish rising where they get focused on a particular fly mm. I think the type of fly is so much less important than the technique and the stealth yeah. and the presentation so yeah. I often use a neutral olive type fly a, a parachute Adams type fly yeah. um, and nine times out of ten it, it works you know right. I'm, I'm, I'd be confident if I saw an odd fish rising in the river if I put a neutral fly to him that they did take it yeah period of intense rising I wouldn't be quite so confident yeah the presentation aspect of things I I, I, I mooted that in my last video um, which mm. is the the video was the my top three tips mm. for successful fly fishing mm. and I, I strongly suggested that presentation is way more important than the actual fly itself mm. now there are occasions as you just mm. pointed out where there might be the, the fish might be keyed in on a specific yes. insect yeah. and you therefore at that point mm. you would have to have you would. A, a very good copy we'll say to get the response mm. but like generally speaking mm. it's not that important it's no. the presentation yeah, yeah. It's, it's presenting your fly that that makes the difference I believe and I often use the phrase that by the time m most poorer anglers have cast their line to a fly there's no trout there to catch yeah because they frightened it either by their approach yeah. or by the way they present yeah. the fly yes and they talk about it being which fly works for you which fly yeah. works for you, and yeah. they're not casting their rod properly yeah so, yeah you know yeah. so the presentation and the approach for me is far more important absolutely mm. and uh, like you can't it cannot really be overemphasized yeah mm. mm. uh, river craft is 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 way more important than what yeah. fly you're actually yes. using and if you're fishing blind and by that i mean sometimes i'd still use dry flies when there's no fish rising but yeah. reading the river and knowing where a trout may be to take a absolutely a fly is and that again important. is a skill that's developed yeah. over time i mean i've been fishing for many many years and i think that's probably you just hit the nail on the head mm. there the most important aspect is being able to read the river mm. and yeah. to understand the river environment and that's true also of nymph fishing i mean yeah. you can see the seams and that's the right you know where they're, they're most likely yeah, to be yeah. As we're on that that sort of uh, the the environment, you you just mooted uh, mentioned the environment there. What changes have you seen in we'll say the last we'll say thirty years, as res in respect of the, the the environment and the river? For me, the river hasn't changed so much, but the way the fish feed has changed and the fly life has changed. So yeah. obviously, the river has changed inside itself. But I am not easily yeah. able to comment on the the dramatic visual changes yeah. of the river but it's definitely changed yeah. um, we all know that um, uh, fertilizer and the application of fertilizers mm -hmm. has intensified the growth of the river yeah. eutrophication etc yeah. uh, takes place and that's definitely changed the fly we've life. lost a lot of our fly species in recent years we have the elder the elder, elder yeah. yeah yeah you used to have to set your watch by the elder I used to in the evenings I used yeah. to in the old days fish a bit of wet fly until the rice started as soon as I felt an elder on mm. my hand I knew 
it was time to change. It was over. either always the tenth or the eleventh of May. I didn't know that, and George. that was absolutely yeah. like you could set your watch Isn't by that it. Amazing. And, and like, it's like swallows return. In absolutely, yeah. but now everything has become so much less predictable as yes. a result of global warming and yeah. the changes in the but environment. But I think that fly has more or less extinct. Or it's extinct, and, and the mayfly now, which we used to have very prolific mm. hatches of the mayfly locally here, mm. like the mayfly now is non-existent. You'll see an odd one hatch throughout mm. the summer here and there, but like mm. I can remember when you could hardly, there wasn't a two foot square on the river where there wasn't a mayfly. Yeah, it, it was that prolific, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and now it's just disappeared. Great shame, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, I, I think it's this sort of moss there's, a, there's a, the an algal river. kind of growth on the river bed yeah. that prevents a lot of fly life from, from emerging. Yeah, from emerging. Yeah, yeah. It's tragic, really. Yeah, it is tragic. You know? yeah. I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, I don't know the intensive agriculture we, we need the farmers to obey the rules and, and, yeah, but uh, I and think stop worrying yeah. so much about intensive farming. Yeah. I know they need to make a living, but there are ways of doing it and taking Without care of it. Without having yeah. such a detrimental if they, effect. If they were more husbanders than industrial people, yeah. that's the trouble with farming. Yeah. It's become a money-driven industry oh, rather than... A, yeah. the, other, the other thing that's changed too is like the the anglers themselves and the way they've adapted to mm. the changes in the environment. Mm. If you look at, say, the modern angler now, we'll say, who's come into fly fishing, we'd say, in the last 10 years, for mm. instance, mm. they seem to be more or less exclusively nymph fishermen. Yes, that's you know, correct. And, uh, like that, and it, as you've already pointed out, it's a very successful method and mm. you catch oh, a lot of fish. But I think they're missing out in a sense that... Oh, that in, they're, in my mind, they totally are missing yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dry fly. Uh, the joy of seeing a, a trout rising presenting your fly to it carefully, seeing him came up the great, you know, the take, the movement of the water. Yeah. There's nothing like it for no. me. Yeah. And then there's another thing, the traditional wet fly, which the vast majority of anglers many years ago used to start off with the down and across sort of wet yes. fly. Like that, um, that's totally gone. It wouldn't occur to me now, and that was what I was talking about when I first started fly fishing the river. Yeah. Swinging a team of wet flies across the river. Not a lot of great skill in it I have to say although those people that are very good at it yeah. are very good at it yeah well but I know one fella now in particular yeah. and who fishes wet flies and uh, he's actually going to be in that chair um, in the near future mm. and I saw him fish wet flies in a competition when I used to fish competitions mm. not so long ago mm. and he was just unbelievable with mm. wet flies mm. he had um, he had techniques of fishing wet flies that I'd never seen. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't be good at it. But in the old days, yeah. you didn't have to be very clever. You well, he, this guy was yeah. extremely skillful with it, and um, I'd be talking to him in depth, hopefully, mm. about that in time. Mm. Um, what was the other thing? Yeah, fishing gear now, for instance, um, tackle, the, the yeah. advances in the tackle, I mean, they're incredible. I mean, like... If you compare the rods and reels and stuff that I started out with, I mean, so, my father used to say you want to be a strong man to carry them. Yeah, you yeah. know, in comparison, yeah. what you have today, you can hardly feel it in your hand. It's oh, so light. It, it's wonderful. It doesn't compensate for poor fishing. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in other words, I'd sooner yeah. uh, be a good fisherman with poor tackle than yeah, uh, the, the other, other way around. Yeah, the other yeah. way around. Yeah. Um, but it is wonderful, and the joy of the lightness of the yeah. rods, mm. the lines have improved in the way that they That's cast. True, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, I think you and I have agreed before they don't always float as well as they say no, that no, no. they do. Like the floating line is something of a misnomer in uh, my view. A, a little, yes, yes. I, I still yeah. use mousseline or a, a grease of that kind. Yeah, irrespective of what line and how much you pay for it, it inevitably sinks at some point. Oh, yes, and I you agree. have to grease it, yeah, even yeah. on the first day of use. Yeah, I agree. I do. Yeah, routinely. just to, to sort of... And the other thing that people don't do, I think, is use leaders that are long enough. That's now right. You need to be able to cast a leader straight, but I never use really less than a 12 foot leader with yeah. a dry fly fish. Yeah, I'd be the same 12, yeah. 14 yeah. feet. Yeah, maybe a 12 foot leader, maybe even a tapered leader, but I'd always yeah. tip it out a bit further. Yeah, just to, to, to hint on the lines there for a second, I, I, uh, many years ago I went to um, a game fair in England and I met a guy called Mike Weaver who wrote quite a few books and stuff mm. on fly fishing and I kind of admired him a lot because he seemed to be very innovative and all that mm. and I was talking to him and I just happened to say to him I said what rod do you use blah 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 what fly mm. what flies and this that the other and I said what lines do you use yeah. and I expected him to say well uh, the latest and yeah, he said yeah. no he said I'll buy the mill ends he said they cost three quid each because <laughs> he said they do exactly the same thing as the hundred quid line he said <laughs> they sink yeah. <laughs> very good yeah <laughs> um, how many rods do you own Dave? Uh, mildly embarrassed to say it's 
probably <laughs> more than 50 fly rods, yeah. I've actually seen his rod storage. It's not a shed, it's more like a house. <laughs> <laughs> you can hardly get in the door for rods and reels and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a bit of a tackle tart, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah. I used to feel guilty when I bought a new fly rod, but then I said, uh, I just enjoy owning it. Yeah. So now I don't feel guilty. I, I love the feel of them. I love yeah. owning them. There is a certain degree of uh, satisfaction in just owning There's nice. For some like reason that. there is, and I have a, yeah. a similar number of reels, as largely because I want different lines as much as I want different reels. Because right. the reel in fly fishing, unless you're fishing for the tropical species that take lots of line, the reel isn't really Absolutely. very important. Absolutely, it's only holding line, yeah, essentially. Yeah, really, yeah. Um, have you any trips planned for the, f for the near future? I have, but whether COVID will allow me to take them or not, I don't know. Probably not, David. <laughs> no, it's, it's not looking good. I'm supposed to be flying to the Seychelles at the beginning of January to fish for GTs, giant trevelis. Um, GTs? Yeah. Sounds yes, like, yeah. like a car, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. And they move like a car, <laughs> like, a, like a sports car, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And I've got a trip booked for sight fishing for steelhead, which is rather unusual in Alaska in next april i'm still hopeful about that one right. i'm beginning to get a bit despondent about the sea trout steelhead, steelhead yeah, which, migratory is a, rainbows. Which, which is a, a, a sea trout a, a rainbow unbelievable a sea run. powerfully fi it, powerful yeah. fish aren't yeah, they yeah yeah hugely yeah. so yeah i'd love to catch one mm. i've caught, caught them but um not sight fishing i've caught them swinging flies sort of what size would they generally run to um an eight ten pounder is a nice fish but they do get bigger Right. Yeah, yeah. As, as, as sea trout do. I mean, sea trout can get very big. You know, and w yeah. when I say sea trout, I mean our brown run sea trout. Yeah. Our brown sea trout. I have to say, I envy you all these different species and different trips and all yeah, that. Yeah. So well, we did go fun. to Chile. We went to Chile together and that was uh, fished their beautiful rivers and streams. That was in there. 2011. Was I think. it? We ate some strange things of varying colours. Yeah, if you they remember. were kind of weird stuff, wasn't it? <laughs> Green stew. And <laughs> yeah, but it was tasty. <laughs> it was. And tasty. kept us alive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the rivers out there were fantastic. Yeah. They were so clean. Yeah. And like, and there's no real tradition of fly fishing in the country itself. I don't think any of them are stocked either, which is lovely. I always love fishing for yeah. wild fish like ours are which is one of the joys but there's no kind of local mm. fly fishers there's, I don't think so no, no there's no. no one in Chile that seems no. to be interested in fly no, fishing no, no, it's no. kind of all people that come from various parts that's of the world correct, you know? yeah. well, so it's been like that in Ireland at times yeah, yeah, yeah. many years ago mm. and that's the thing now that's, that's another big change that I've noticed when I would say 20 years ago you could go to the river and you could walk for three miles and meet nobody. Yeah, yeah. You know, even during the peak of the yeah. Mayfly hatch, which yeah. was, if you kind of call it the optimum time, mm. there'd be nobody down there no. only me. Oh, no. Now oh, you, no. you go down there any day virtually and you've yeah. got plenty of people about. You can still find places though, George. Oh, you so can, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a good thing people in one sense the easy thing. that we have all these new people yeah. coming into the sport because yeah. it keeps it keeps an eye on the river because I was just going to say hopefully it'll, it'll yeah. improve the way that because we without them. without the anglers I don't think the river has any chance at all no no because nobody no. else seems to care about it well maybe the environmentalists and as they're but coming they're very few and far between oh, I know and they don't have any they don't wield any no, power no I do agree with you I do agree yeah. with you that's a good development so anyway that's um the future, Dave, well, how is it going to work out for fly fishing? What well, I think um, I've already mentioned COVID. I need the planes to start flying again to let me go yeah. to places. That's a very selfish way of looking yeah, at yeah. it. I think the future for us here in Ireland, um, the environment is all important. We've got so many wonderful rivers, as you know, George. Yeah. And I fish a lot of little tiny streams and they've all got trout in. Yeah, but I have. just want to preserve that for the future. Yeah. Hope it'll always be there. We're right. very lucky to live in this Absolutely. part of the world, isn't it? And one final question, Dave, before we wind it up. Name your favourite river. Oh, that would be our local river, sure, for, yeah. for definite. I've yeah. fished lots of trout rivers, New Zealand, Argentina, Chile, as you know, USA many, many times. Yeah. And rivers like the Green and that, they're fantastic, but I wouldn't swap any of them for the river, sure. Yeah, I'd be the same. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and although I do lots of exotic fishing, if there's one fishing I would never want to lose, it's dry fly trout fishing on the river, sure. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's wonderful. Nothing like it. No, nothing like yeah. it. And the tributaries are good and different. Yeah. That's the interesting thing. Yeah. Within half an hour of my house, I've got 10 different rivers. Some of them are mountain streams, they're acidic. Some of them are limestone yeah. rivers they're all very different 
Right. So the river shore and its tri tributaries definitely I'll never be without. Right. There you have it, folks. You have it from David Andrew. <laughs> and I'm really happy that you came out today to my little studio. It's always nice spending Thanks time for taking with, the time. with you, George. I enjoy your chat. I enjoy yeah. us fishing together. And I'm still learning things from you, too. And I'm always <laughs> learning. Not everybody's learning all the yeah. time in this. We played with Tenkara a little while ago together. That was amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> Tenkara. For anyone who's never fished Tenkara, and I never had up till one day there during the summer, um, just very briefly, it's a rod with no reel. Yes, yeah. And we caught plenty of fish. Oh, it catches a lot of fish because you have no line on the water. It's a <laughs> bit like Euronymphian, only with a dry fly. That's so you're right. holding the rod fairly high with just the fly on the water. Yeah. So there's no drag, no line for the fish to see. It's very, It was very a unique effective. experience. And you know what we might do, Dave? Maybe next season, Mm. We might do a little video on Tenkara fishing on the we shore. We certainly can on the shore, but I would also recommend that we go to some tiny little mountain streams that yeah. I fish. They're small fish, you have to have a mindset change, yeah. but it's not easy. And it's wonderful catching these beautiful little yeah. brown trout that we have in this country on a, on a tiny little stream with a, with a little Tenkara rod. That would be Look forward to that, Dave. Yeah, we'll do that. So we'll we are, it. folks. There's something to look forward to. And in the meantime... Once again, thanks very much thanks to Dave George. for 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 taking the time to do this, and um, I'll be talking to you soon again. There you go, folks. That was David Antrim, and uh, I hope you enjoyed our little chat. I certainly did. He had a lot to say and an awful lot of interesting points to make. So um, very soon I'll have another guest here in the hot seat, so to speak. So be sure to subscribe, and that way you won't miss a minute. It's fascinating. I'm gonna have some great characters lined up. We're gonna have some great chats and. Don't miss a minute. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified of when the video is uploaded. So once again, thanks very much for joining me, and good day on Keadorella, good day Shiv Sloan.